This is important because over the next two weeks, we're going to hear a lot about uh, Terry Sanderson's mental and physical health, both before the ski collision and after the ski collision. And you're going to feel sorrow for him. But we're not here. I can feel sorrow, too. But that's not why you're here. You're here to figure out if someone negligently crashed into someone or if no one did. And I think the law will permit you to decide that no one was at fault. Unlike a car accident or something, a ski collision is different. There are inherent risks of skiing. I know when I get on the top of the tram at Snowbird, and it's a gusty day like today, and I say, if I don't do this right, I could kill myself. I mean, it's, it's a breathtaking, wonderful, exhilarating, but also a little dangerous, isn't it? That we're strapping on pieces of wood or fiberglass on our boots, and we're going down a very snowy, icy hill. So, that happens. Maybe some of you have been hit. I've been hit skiing. It was disorienting. It was unhappy. I was unhappy, to say the least. Uh, but I did recognize it as an inherent risk. I mean, okay, let me, let me move on on that. So the blindfold. The blindfold is, I'm not going to do this because I feel sorry for someone. Then the scales. Mr. Sanderson has brought the claim. As a result, he has to tip the scale. Okay? The tie means plaintiff does not win. The tie goes to the defendant. So they have to tip. That's who brought the claim. That's the weighing. And then you see the sword. Now, the sword can be, I'm seeking justice, so I'm proactively fighting it. And sometimes Lady Justice is actually seen with a shield. Let me suggest that that sword is being used to defend a meritless claim, a false allegation, really kind of an offensive one, uh, that uh, she somehow left him an unconscious man and bolted and, and uh, it's, it's, I can tell you, we believe it to be utter BS. Objection, Your Honor. Argument. He's supposed to present what he's going to show, not, not argue it. We believe it to be. It's fair, it's fair isn't it? Oh, sustained. It, it is bordering on argument, counsel. Thank you. Thank you. He's suing for $3 million. Okay. Let's, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hit damages later. I, I want to I hit the merits of the case first. So the burden of proof, I wanted to emphasize. And then uh, instruction 11 says, don't abandon your common sense. So this can look, you're going to hear from brain experts and uh, a lot of people to talk about this. But don't abandon your common sense. That, that's very important. I also want to just reference to you that uh, you should pay attention more to the records before someone's thinking lawsuit than the records after someone's thinking lawsuit. Objection, argument, Your Honor. This, this is an open statement. This is an argument. Sustained. You're going to see a lot of records about uh, what was going on before and during and then after. Some of the records before indicate that Terry Sanders had brain issues before. In fact, there was a prior MRI. Now, let me hit the accident because I, I don't I'd be silly to address other issues. Let me explain what was happening. And can you find that second picture? Ms. Paltrow has sentimental feelings about skiing. Her dad, who uh, left this life too early, took her skiing as a kid at Alta. She grew up 
learning to ski, and those are very sentimental trips. In fact, after her dad died in his 50s, she didn't ski for a long time because it was an emotional uh, thing for her. That is Miss Paltrow. That is Gwyneth on the right. That is her son, Moses, on the left on the very day of this ski accident. All right, so they're going up. And uh, this was also, so it was a sentimental issue because she had started getting back into skiing. And she did it because she wanted her kids to learn like she had. Another thing, she had a boyfriend at the time who's now her husband. And he has kids the exact same age as Gwyneth's daughter and son. Oddly, the daughter is the same age as the daughter and the son as the son. And this was really their first trip to sort of have a mixed, see if this might work. So uh, it was a special time and it was a lovely day. So some uh, ski events we worry about, is the sun in someone's eyes? No one's saying that. Is it a snowy day? No. It was a nice day. How about, was it slick run? No. It was a nice groomed run. How about was a really complex hill? No, it wasn't, wasn't the bunny hill, but bandana, who maybe some of you know, I mean, it's, it's a green hill. Um, and so none of those factors kind of come into play. Moderately busy. And she's skiing uh, again with a group. So her group is she, Brad, now her husband, who you're gonna hear from, her daughter, Apple, who you're going to hear from, Moses, who you're going to hear from, and then uh, some Deer Valley people. Now, these weren't her people. These were Deer Valley instructors. I could have hired Eric Christiansen that day, just as Gwyneth did. Uh, and, uh, and then Brad has two kids, and they had ski instructors. So that, that was their group. It was kind of a loose group. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, they went to the top, they met at the top of Bandana with the plan. This was about 11.30, 11 a.m. Uh, we're gonna go down and have lunch. I think it's the Empire Lodge, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we're gonna all kind of ski down. Um, Gwyneth is a conservative skier. She always skis on the far right. So if it's like a highway, fast people go on the left. I don't know if it's the same, but it's far right and then kind of small curves. Um, and she's not, she's generally watching her kids, but she's not specifically watching because they're, uh, they have their instructors. She's skiing enjoying herself, and she hears, suddenly she sees two skis appear between her skis. And a man comes up right behind her. Now they're not going fast. That's kind of the odd thing here. He comes up almost body to body like this and starts groaning. She doesn't know what's going on. What's going on? Am I being assaulted? She's moving forward and then she's like, they, they are, begin falling to the right and she's uh, feeling freaked out, I think is a fair statement. And he hits down, apparently uh, his side and his head, and she is essentially falling on him, but keep in mind, his skis are intertwined now with hers. Her first reaction is get away from this. And so she's pulling, trying to get away. What has just happened? Now, she only has to think about this for a few seconds to realize, okay, I'm not, I'm not being assaulted. But this fellow, she had a more colorful word, has just run into me. And she said, what are you doing? Or words to that effect. And he, he's like, I, 
words to the effect, I didn't see you. And then there's a question, well, who ran into who? And he says, did you, or you ran into me? And Gwyneth's like, no, you ran square right into me. And he said, I'm sorry. He doesn't deny saying, I'm sorry. He doesn't remember it, but he doesn't dispute it. Now, she's still ticked off. In fact, uh, much has been said about the so-called uh, only eyewitness. So you're going to hear from him this afternoon. I don't have to give you commentary on him. But he will say he heard and turned. He heard and turned. That's what the Deer Valley guy says. Eric Christiansen, one of the instructors, said he heard and turned and, and then saw. So uh, I'll comment just a minute more on Mr. Ramon in just a minute. You'll hear about him. Back to Gwyneth's story. She's, so she's backed up. She's safe. Eric's on the scene. He's helping people get their skis off. And uh, he's trying to figure out what happened. Now, Eric, Eric, backing up, they started at the hill. This is at the very beginning of the hill, by the way. It's not halfway down. It's not three-fourths down. It's the first quarter down. He's trying to figure out what happened. But he had seen Gwyneth go down. Then Terry, who, who was cutting across the, the whole thing, if I'm misstating it, we're, we're going to have to we're defer to their testimony when they testify, but I'm trying to give you a big picture. He's, he's making a wide, uh, much wider turning, and guess what? He's blind in one eye and has decreasing vision in his left eye. He has hearing aids. He's had heart, stroke, uh, many other medical conditions. Just weeks earlier, he had told his doctor, I'm feeling old suddenly. Uh, and Terry's story, by the way, is that he's, he's coming across and he sees a struggling younger woman, uh, not younger, a, young, a struggling female skier. And he's trying, he wants to be really clear to stay away from her. So he's, he's actually turning his head to clear the beginner skier. And what happens? He comes right upon Gwyneth. He back turns with his better eye and uh, suddenly she's there. So the Deer Valley report, do you mind? By the way, Deer Valley is not a party to this lawsuit. The court dismissed Deer Valley. So Gwyneth's not Deer Valley. Deer Valley stands on its own. Objection or argument, Your Honor. Overruled. Deer Valley stands on its own. And uh, uh, I don't know if they're going to assert like there's some massive cover-up or what. But Objection or argument? Sustained. Uh, back one, I think, James. By the way, I think the goal is to give everyone a little better access with these little screens, but that it hasn't worked out today. So Eric Christiansen, remember, he hears and he turns, and he goes directly over there. He's there within seconds, and he's, he's seen what happened. And what does he say? Can you blow up the first half? Chief complaint, male skier took her out from behind. He's, he's putting this together. And then let's do the bottom thing. And then we won't, we won't focus on exhibits anymore really today on this. But first thing male skier said, does that say said? I can't read it. Anyone? Stated. Stated. Was that she appeared right in front of him. 
thus admitting that he was the uphill skier. She never saw him because he came in from behind. That was the evaluation from the Deer Valley skier, from the Deer Valley instructor. Interestingly, Eric's trying to figure out, Eric Christiansen, the ski instructor, is trying to figure out, all right, what's the first question, by the way? Everyone okay? Everyone okay? Now, they were both, uh, any collision, you take a body blow, it takes a little while to gather your senses, recognize, okay, I'm safe, okay. But uh, his answer was he was okay. And um, he was on his feet. This took minutes. Gwyneth uh, was not happy still. Moses, who you're going to meet, he's now 16, but he was a nine-year-old at the time, was with his instructor. His instructor started to come over. Moses came over, and he saw his mom, and he was worried. He hadn't seen his mom. First of all, she's on the ground, and she's yelling at this guy. Um, he, she might have said something like, what the F word? And I think she might have said the F word. We're going to figure that out. And she's mad. And he said, I haven't seen my mom like that. And he was sort of personally a little upset. All right. And then, uh, okay, everyone's okay, everyone's okay. And Eric Christiansen, the ski instructor, said, a ski patrol person, who's different than the instructor, a ski patrol person came by and said, everyone okay? And he said, Mr. Sanderson and Craig Ramon, who you're going to meet this afternoon, talked to each other and said, we're okay. And they, wait, they said, we're okay, and the ski patrol left. All right, now everyone's okay. And then I think Eric Christiansen, okay, he, Gwyneth, you can go. Join your family. By the way, your family's waiting for her at the bottom. Brad, interestingly, had heard it and looked up and saw his wife on the, now wife on the ground, and had come back up, and she had skied down to be with him, not to leave. By the way, you'll never hear the words hit and run in this whole trial. This was not a hit and run. The plaintiffs even had a ski expert evaluate it, and they said it's not a hit and run. So take, take that out of your mind. All right, so, uh, all right, now what's going on? Okay, everyone, everyone's good to go. Everyone went. Terry, oh, right before he left, apparently, Eric Christiansen said, your buddy just took out Gwyneth Paltrow. They didn't even, no one knew who she was. By the way, she had the helmet and goggles and everything. Guess who doesn't, doesn't who denied that? Craig Ramon, their so-called first skier, has a whole different crazy story. Uh, that Objection, argument, Your Honor. That is argument. O overruled. Oh, then not. Then I reassert my crazy <laughs> comment. All right, so uh, I'll continue the story. Everyone's good to go. Good, good to go. Okay, then they now hear she's Gwyneth Paltrow, and uh, they like, okay, well let's let's ski down. So they ski down a ways further, and Terry. I shouldn't call him Terry, <coughs> Mr. Sanderson, uh, does not feel good. He, he, he feels confused, he says. So uh, you'll hear them like, well, let's, let's get a ski patrol person now. We had previously waved one off, but now we, we've changed our mind. We need ski patrol. Toboggan person comes named Whitney. Uh, and she, she pulls up, and, they, and the first thing Whitney says is, what happened? And Mr. Sanderson says, I don't know. 
I'm not sure. He did not say, I was just hit. Interestingly, Craig Ramon, the friend, uh, did not correct that statement. So Craig Ramon, by the way, never once told Eric Christiansen he hit, excuse me, she hit him. Didn't say one word about it. Uh, didn't say we need help. Part of this crazy story is he 